Hey, here's a little bonus tip for you. When I'm done cleaning a jack or you know fixing a jack, I'm gonna degrease it really good. Wipe it all down so we've got no, uh, no residual oil or anything like that. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take me a nice fresh piece of cardboard, slide it underneath and let it sit overnight. And then when we come back the next day, we can see do we have any leaks and are we leaking when it's non-pressurized? So we keep the handle open, everything's just resting. And once you pick it up, you should be able to tell where it's leaking from rather than just being a big blob of oil with it not moving at all. You kind of see primarily where your drip is. Is it leaking out of the front of the ram, the back of the ram? Is it leaking back here in the valve system? What have you. So just a nice tip for you to be able to tell if you did everything right. I don't care what kind of shop you have, being without your floor jack is a major pain. Now we had three in the shop that were disabled, so we're gonna take them apart, find out what's wrong with them, and possibly fix them. Stick around and find out how we do it. Okay, so three floor jacks that all had problems. Now, if you're like us, one fails and you just kind of move it to the side and you don't use it anymore and you start using the other one, and then that one fails and you grab the other one and the other one, and then pretty soon you're left without a floor jack or in our case, uh, one regular size or one like three ton and then one little bitty one and it's just not enough sometimes. Uh, so anyway, so it was time to fix the three jacks that had been sitting around. One of them has probably been sitting around 15 plus years, at least 10, uh, 10 a minimum. Anyway, so we're gonna take them apart, find out what's wrong with them. Now, I really don't wanna get too detailed on any one of them because all three of these different jacks, even though two of them were Craftsman jacks, and, uh, and then two of them even looked alike, uh, but none of them were identical whatsoever. However, there's one common thing that all floor jacks have, and I'm saying all with an asterisk. So let's just say the majority of floor jacks you see, when you take them apart, when you take the, the main body out of the frame, what you have is just a bottle jack. That's all you have here is a hydraulic cylinder. No intro needed here. We're gonna rebuild a floor jack or at least check out all the components of a floor jack. Be back in a moment. So here is the jack that we'll be using today to, uh, to rebuild or to uh, find out what's wrong with it. Um, you know, different jacks may be a little bit different, but for the most part, they all have a lot of similarities. Um, so some of the tools you are gonna need to take these things apart, number one, you're gonna need to know, you know, how are they put together? These, these have a lot of uh, Allen heads or Allen bolts in them. So I've got uh, an Allen head or a socket, hex socket adapter. Um, I've got some long needle nose pliers. Those, those seem to come in very handy um, when taking off the long springs and things like that. Uh, two straight slot screwdrivers, so uh, probably a number two, number three, or you know, a small and a big one. Um, pin light comes in really handy. A marker comes in really handy as well. I'll show you that here in a moment. A big pipe wrench. Um, if not a big pipe wrench, then probably a big socket that's going to uh, match that on the top of your ram or on top of the bottle jack inside. And then I'll be using an impact wrench as well. You don't have to use that, use a socket. You're gonna need some jack oil. Um, you can buy the, like the Bars League jack oil, but you can also find just regular hydraulic jack oil for a lot cheaper. This was like a buck cheaper than the Bars League brand. And this was a whole quart versus like 12 and a half ounces or something. So uh, you can usually find it. By the way, hydraulic jack oil is usually like AW32 or something like that. So and people run 10 weight, what have you. There's not a lot of um, specifics when it comes to jack oil. You just need good hydraulic oil. Uh, also something handy is some, uh, are some you know, really skinny needle nose pliers if you need to get in to get a spring, a little small screwdriver. And then a magnet comes in very handy as well. So those are the different tools. I'll also use uh, some type of drain pan to drain our, our hydraulic oil. You'll need probably several rags or paper towels if you want to use that. And then I'll also use some brake clean. Um, I've got it in a pressurized container here, but you could use cans of it, use some kind of degreaser, just something to clean stuff off as we start getting oily. Uh, I also love to use cardboard. Um, cardboard's great to put down. It's just gonna absorb a lot as well as kind of make a nice little table for us as well. So uh, let's quit talking and let's actually get to it. I'm gonna remove the handle here, put that aside. And then we're just going to basically start taking this apart. And in this case, it's got a little tool tray, a magnetic tool tray that sits back here. So we're gonna take that off. 
and move that aside. Make sure you got plenty of room to keep stuff. Um, and now what we have here is basically a bottle jack, just so your typical, you know, bottle style hydraulic jack that's in the middle of a uh, basically a scissor uh, ish, uh, situation basically that raises this jack. So no different than a typical hydraulic bottle jack that you would have by itself. Um, got a couple of valves with some ball bearings probably, maybe like needle jets in there. But what we want to do, we want to remove this bottle jack. So I'm going to utilize my little uh, 3 8 impact here uh, with my hex, hex key and Take those two out. Take these two out here. And basically our bottle jack is actually loose right now. And by the way, we can see right here, we've got some leakage here. So in this case, what's wrong with this jack? It's actually leaking out the backside right here, but we'll get to that here in a moment. So for these springs, we want to take these springs off. So I'm going to just take some long needle nose pliers and grab those. Sometimes your jacks will just have one spring. Uh, in this case, it's got two. Many of them do have two. And the other thing we need to remove is this little cotter pin right here. But you see it's spread out on the top side. So let's get to that top side and then we'll take this out. And one way we can do this, we could either flip it over and raise this up or I can just take this now um, so I'm going to have to flip it over on its side here, raise it up, come this way. Now I can get to that. And you should be able to reuse that cotter pin. Take my cotter pin out, put that to the side, and then that basically just slides off of there. And now we can take our spring and we can get to it and slide that out and put our springs to the side as well. And now you can take your, uh, your jack, go clean that up if you need to, clean all the years of dust and cobwebs and grease off of it and get it ready to put back together, but we can move that to the side for right now. So you can see rather quickly, we're down to the meat of taking care of our jack situation. So within five minutes, you can have your main part of your jack, your bottle jack sitting on your, on your work stand or on your table or whatever you're using. I'm gonna take a moment to clean up here. Okay, now there's a couple of ways you can handle all this. I'm going to talk while I'm, while I'm taking some of these screws out. Number one, this is your reservoir here. So your ram is inside here. You got your main ram that's applying all the force. This outside shell here is really acting as a reservoir. So the ram's inside there. There's a tube inside this tube. Then this outside tube is just filled with oil, basically. And that's your main fill point. So we'll take that out. And then... These are basically your valves and such. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, and uh, we're gonna flip this over and just let it drain a little bit. And then what we're gonna do, once we get it all drained out and taken apart, we're gonna take this big cap off up top here with our big pipe wrench, probably put it up in our vise, and then uh, we'll finish dismantling this bottle jack. So as you can see, the majority of our oils there, there's still quite a bit in this distribution block here. And we'll get to that here in a moment as well. As I push that ram in, it's dipping in all that oil back in there. So when this ram is pushed out, a lot of the oil is inside there. And then when you push it back in, it's emptying it back into the reservoir. And that's what you see dumping out right here. And it'll continue to drain. And no matter how long you do it, you're still going to have quite a bit of a mess and that's why it's good to have this cardboard down. Now before we take the rest of this apart, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hook, put this in the vise and I'm gonna use our pipe wrench to take this top cap off. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got this cap loose. You'll see here it's got an O-ring. You can start seeing that O-ring starting to show here. And I can pull that ram out. We'll get to that in a moment as well. We'll just lay this to the side. And this just dropped out, so make sure you keep an eye out what's going on. That's the screen. I'll show you that here in one moment. And then this thing sits on an O-ring as well. As I mentioned, that's just kind of a reservoir. See, it sits and seals on this O-ring right here. And then this internal tube is what actually pressurizes this ram to fill it with oil. And then it pushes against that seal and that seal pushes against the side to create that, to keep that seal to push everything up and extend that jack. So that's about as far as we go. And this is where a good light, a pin light comes in handy where you can shine down in there, see if you've got metal bits, see if you've got pieces coming apart, see if you've got you know, wear issues. This one actually looks pretty good. Doesn't show any signs of wear really. Um, you know, you can see some streaking and such, but nothing bad whatsoever. But again, nice to have that pin light and look for metal shavings and such. But we're good. I could take that out if I if I if I needed to with a pipe wrench. I really don't need to. I don't see any reason to do so. Next thing we're gonna do is right here, I need a 10 millimeter wrench. Gonna take this bolt loose. And basically it's just holding your jack valve where you op open and close it with the handle. Show you that here in a moment. So this actually spins with your handle. This is how you close the valve off. Close it this way, tighten it all the way down or you loosen it all the way up and basically you want to keep loosening it and it will come out threaded basically. So you see it's going to keep coming out, keep coming out and there'll be no ring in there and you also have to be careful because many times there'll be a spring in there. There'll also be uh, possibly at least one ball bearing in there. Uh, so depending on what type of system we've got set up as to what's down in there, but you just want to, don't want to dump this out willy-nilly so you can see on this one we have a, a flat spot here with a little indention that tells me it's probably riding on a ball bearing of some sort yeah and i can see a ball bearing in there i don't know if you can see that but there is a ball bearing down in that hole and i'll show you here in just one moment um, there it is don't always stop there because a lot of times uh, there are more than just one ball bearing. In this case, there's not. That's, that's empty now. I can look down in there and I can see a hole uh, down in that hole, if you will. And I know that it's empty now. And now here's what I like to do. On a clean section of my cardboard, I like to lay this like that. And you can freehand this if you want to. But just makes it handy. Just kind of draw out your distribution box here, your, your bottle jack. So now that I got that outlined, I'll then copy over those uh, different screws. So I know that back here I have the, uh, the big ram. And then here's for my handle adjustment. And Here's one of the valves, here's another valve, and here's another valve, okay? And so we'll see why I'm drawing that there in just one moment. And like right now, I can know that there are ball bearing that goes right there. So I can draw a little ball bearing. I also like to take and just kind of poke a hole in my cardboard and and take that ball bearing and push it down in the cardboard. So now it won't roll away. So now I've kind of got it where it needs to be. This is my diagram for when I put this back together. And I can also 
lay my pieces where they need to go as well. And if you can, try not, try not to get this all dirty and filthy so you know how to go back to it. Uh, now, here's the situation where we basically got the, uh, this is basically what pressurizes the, ch the main chamber here. So you want to take this clip off. Sometimes these, ha these have a snap ring. Uh, sometimes they have a, uh, uh, you know, different types of snap rings. Um, so it just depends on what type of tools you're going to need. Sometimes you need snap ring pliers. Others, when you have the C-clips like this, it's easy to take off with just a, uh, a uh, straight slot screwdriver. And by the way, I'll go find that piece that just jumped from me. As you can see, be careful when you're taking these apart. And so now I can just move to, I'm going to go to here now. And I've got a socket that actually fits this. And I can also, whoop, I just squirted oil everywhere. I can push that down where it's out of the way. And I can pour this oil out. And basically what you have here is just another little ram. You can see here that we've got, sometimes you'll have an O-ring on this. In this case, we've got an O-ring inside of here that actually seals this up. So this O-ring in here seals on this and keeping that from leaking. And then that's what applies your force when you're jacking things up. And then you also have an O-ring down inside of here as well that seals on the bottom of this. Uh, of this. Now these screws here, typically they say do not adjust as you can see here. Now you'll see on one of these, there's, this is just a cap. So on this one here, I know it's just a cap. So I'm gonna pull the cap off. So now that's just a cap. Again, we're looking this way. So I know that cap goes there. And then we'll see when I pour this oil out right here, the down inside there is another screw and that's your adjustment. And let me show you how we do this. If you've ever adjusted a carburetor, it's the same way. So we're gonna count half turns or we're gonna count turns, so going down till we close it, because this is adjustable both ways, okay? So we're gonna go half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three. So right at, right at three turns, and again, I know it's this one right here, and so what I can put here is three turns. So that one's three turns from the bottom. Now I can take this one out. Use my magnet, pull that out, and I can put that here. And by the way, it's got a little peg on it. I know that that goes into a spring. So now the next thing in here, you'll see, is a spring, but that's not all, because there's something on the bottom side of that spring as well. What we also have is this little thing and a ball bearing. So again, place our ball bearing in an indentation there so it doesn't roll away and keep everything kind of nice and tidy for that hole. Then you want to ensure that there's nothing left in there. So again, you can use a little pin light, make sure there's nothing left in there. Then on this one, we want to make sure that it's closed all the way and it is, so it's tight. There's no adjustment here. So I can take this one out. And when you're looking at these, you want to look at your O-rings and make sure they're still proud of the outsides of the screw. And that means it's still sealing against the chamber. If they're not proud anymore, if they've got flat spots, you need to replace them. But I look at the, at the jack kind of like a transmission. Typically when somebody, you know, takes a transmission apart, they don't replace every single part in the transmission. They replace what's worn, what's broken, because there's some things that just real, really rarely ever wear out, uh, especially in an oily situation. And that's the case with a jack as well. But again, under this, you can see we have two ball bearings. So again, be very careful when you're taking these apart. You don't take that for granted. 
And so we now, now we know it's this hole right here. So make me a little indention for each one of my ball bearings. And you'll also notice that a lot of times all of these ball bearings are different sizes, or at least that there's two or three sizes in each jack. Like that one's really little, that one's kind of medium, that one's big, and I think that one's even in between those two. So definitely different ball bearings for each one of the holes. And again, even on this one, so we'll try to screw it down and it looks like a quarter turn. Nope, half a turn. So we've got a half a turn there of adjustment. So we'll say one half turn for that one there. No adjustment on that one, a half a turn here. And we can take this one out. This one goes here. And we're going to have a spring again. I can tell by the, uh, by the little peg there. So we have a spring and two ball bearings and a base to that spring, basically. Oops. So there's the two ball bearings. There's the spring and the base of that spring. So a lot of ball bearings in this one. I've also seen a lot of them that some of the newer ones where they're not using a lot of ball bearings and they're using more of what looks like, you know, needle and jets and a carburetor. So again, just in this jack, we have one, two, three, four, five, six ball bearings that go in the distribution block of this jack. Now I can look down in there and I can see there are no more ball bearings. Just a little bit of residual oil. Now I can kind of bump this to make sure we don't have anything else in there. Now at this point I can just use some, some brake clean or some, some type of degreaser and I can kind of clean up everything if I want to. Doesn't hurt if you want to blow, blow air through all these passages as well. I'm not going to worry about it. I guess one more tool that is helpful is a little pick to pick out these O-rings as we need. But understand, once you start picking out an O-ring, that O-ring's done. So if you pick out an O-ring, it really needs to be replaced because you're probably going to scar it. Like in this base here, we have two different style rings here. We have a little plastic uh, washer type of ring and then we have an O-ring as well. And where this goes is at the bottom of this guy right here. So that's kind of how it seals, is this washer presses down on that O-ring and squeezes against the side. And you can buy a jack rebuild kit with all these things or you can just replace these as needed if you can find them. That uh, my plastic washer there is absolutely fine. And actually, I think my, my O-ring is fine as well. It doesn't have any flat spots on it. So I'm going to go back with it. Make sure that everything's clean here. There's really not a lot of science here to putting these O-rings back in other than just taking care of not to scar them. And then like this one here, this plastic ring, and you can work this in with your fingers, or you can be careful with a flat blade screwdriver, or you can use a little plastic, uh, you know, plastic little spatula tool, however you want to do that. Now that we got it in there, make sure it's free of debris. You can tighten that back up. Okie doke. So now all that happens here is when, when this actually goes up, when this pushes down, this pushes oil in these different passages and then through these series of check balls and, and springs actually fills this ram full of oil. And as long as our seals 
are working as long as our ball bearings are sealing. Uh, everything should work fine. It should push up, it should hold, but it's when these seals start going bad or O-rings start going bad or we get low on fluid that things like that don't work. So just gonna check these things out. And again, here's one of the seals that typically fail, but you can see it's still got kind of, they call this like a, a U-shaped seal or a, a tapered seal because it does have a taper, kind of looks like a dress because it sits in here like this and the backside is kind of concave. So when the pressure pushes against it, it forces that seal out to seal even more so that it actually pushes this up and actually the fluid's going inside here and coming inside this tube and the fluid's coming in and forcing this up the ram. And by the way, to put the, one of these in, number one, this has got a center post. Some of these don't have that, but make sure it's in that. And then you, you can see the taper here on this inner ram. And you just wanna kind of work it around there. So again, make sure your center post is, is inside. There we go. And then you can just kind of work this around like that and get it down that taper to keep that seal from, from folding inside out. So and you can see how well that's grabbing just with, without any fluid in there. But make sure that it does go in and out rather easily. I mean, it needs to be tight because there is a seal in there. But that's good. And then you're going to have an O-ring right here that provides as a wipe and a seal to the ram right here that's, again, typically not pressurized because that's just open to the, to the reservoir but that will leak on you. If you've got a leak, a lot of times it's that O-ring right there or this O-ring right here. So make sure we, before we put it back together that not only is this clean, but that it's got a little lube on it as well before we put it back together. And then we wanna check this O-ring that again, could be a leaker, not necessarily pressurized, uh, but could definitely leak on you. So now it's seated all the way down on that O-ring. And also my fill port is sticking up. We don't want that laying to the side because we need that to be able to fill. Make sure we're free of junk. And again, this is where we're gonna start threading here. So you can see it's threading from the inside there. And if you want to, you can go ahead and pull this up a little so that you can go ahead and seal that onto the ram there you go to make sure it's going to seal well and then start threading that on and that o-ring as long as it's oiled up good should go into that tapered area rather easily and now i'm going to have to take it back over to the uh, to the vise put my pipe wrench on it and tighten that down okay so we've got the, the nut tightened up there. By the way, you could use an impact wrench on this as well. It's just a pretty large nut. Um, and if you don't have a pipe wrench to break it free, or a lot of times it won't break free, find you a diesel mechanic, heavy equipment mechanic. They'll probably zip that off for you. They'll have uh, sockets big enough to do that. Throw them a couple of bucks. They'll probably be happy to do it for you. Just catch them during a, you know, a time that they're not busy or, or drop it off to them better yet. Uh, but typically they're pretty good about doing that. Uh, again, make sure you tip them a little bit. It's worth their time and effort in helping you out, right? Now that we want to go back together, and again, all we're doing here, you're wanting to check these things out and replace these items that may be bad. In my case, we were all good except this O-ring back here on this ram that was leaking. Um, so that should have taken care of our problem altogether. Um, so now we're just going to go back and uh, we can start here again to get a reference. We know this is kind of how our picture set up. So we could go left to right if we want to. And the first thing we want to do is grab that ball bearing so we can use our magnet here. Grab our ball bearing and our ball, ball bearing goes in first and it should drop down in center. You can check it out and look if you want to. Um, but then it's gonna be uh, this part here that's got that concave on it that sits on top of the bearing. And then your spring is gonna go on top of that. Make sure that seat's down all the way. And then basically this is your cap um, to the spring. And that's what's gonna thread down. And this is what we had three turns on. So you don't wanna go, you know, 
heavy fisted here, but once it bottoms out, so that's pretty bottomed out there, then we want to go half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. So that's three turns out. We're back to where we need to be. Now we can put our cap on. And then our cap can be tightened up. And then next we can just move over. And now all we have here, we don't have any springs. Just have two ball bearings here. The small one's gonna go down first. That makes sense, right? Because you couldn't put the big one first. And the big one goes second. And then this one goes on top of it. And again, this one was closed all the way. There was no adjustment on this one. And I just found something that I'll show you here in just one moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to this one and we'll put again our little bearing in first. And then we'll put our big one in. And then we'll put, and you can do it this way too as well if you want to. Put it in sideways and make sure everything goes down and seats okay. And this one goes on top of that. And this one was a half a turn out. So we want to bottom this out and then go half a turn. Just like that. So we had a half a turn. Okay, that one's good. And now here's the one. That we want. Well, should use my magnet. There we go. Put a ball bearing in there. And, and again, this is what's going to open the valve for us to be able to jack it up, release it, let it down, so forth. This is the check ball that lets that fluid by, bypass. Then I can put this, which basically keeps that from going anywhere keeps you from being able to back that all the way out. So that's back together, but look what I forgot to do. Okay, that closes all the way. There we go. So that's good, but here, here's a screen that I said I was gonna get to you about in a moment. Gotta take this reservoir back off. That's a pretty important screen. So back over to the vise. I'm gonna take this reservoir back off and show you where it goes. Okay, so this screen here goes right here in this hole. So not this top one, but on this bottom one, that's basically your intake. And that lets fluid back inside. So that mean, basically means any dirty fluid will stay in the reservoir and not enter actually into the pump itself, which comes through, through this hole right here and goes into the ram. So that's kind of your filter, if you will. So that's pretty important. Definitely should not leave that out. So if you wonder why I was putting this together without that in there, it was an accident. I could edit that out if I wanted to, but it'd be better to show you. Okay, so I got the nut tightened back up. I got my screen on there. Uh, I've got everything back together. We are ready to put this jack back together, Jack. Okay, now I need to put my spring on here, my cap right here, and actually let me pull this up as high as it'll go. Make things quite a bit easier. Go. Okay, now that we got our snap ring on here, now we can put this thing back together. All right, let's get our jack back over here. Get it upside down here. We'll move our fluid out of the way. First thing we want to do is take our springs and go ahead and put them on this base here because that will be hard to do once we get it inside the body. Very easy to do right now. And then we want to take and we're going to line up that pinhole for the cotter pin, at least somewhat. 
and we can collapse this down. And one of the things with this jack, we want to make sure this goes into this hole right here. Because you can easily miss that step. There we go. And then basically this roller here is going to push on this ram. So we're good right there. Now we can take can take our needle nose pliers, long needle nose preferably, stretch our springs, put them on the post. There we go. Some of these are harder than others. These aren't too, too bad. There we go. So I've got our springs on and I could go ahead and take my cotter pin if I want to. Now we want to put our bolts back in and you can make a lot of adjustment by just moving the, the scissor jack to where it needs to go. There we go. And I would definitely recommend you getting all, sometimes there's four, sometimes there's eight bolts started. In this case, case socket head screws started before you tighten any of them. Just a good rule of thumb for really anything. Putting engines together, jacks together, doesn't matter. This one started. Now that I've got it all started. So, and now all we've got left to do is to pump some fluid in her. And by the way, you're probably going to make a mess here. Oh, like I said, you're probably going to make a mess. Now you're not done yet. Put your screw, or sometimes that's just a rubber plug, by the way, not a screw. All the newer ones seem to just have a rubber plug and you can just kind of burp them. And then I'm going to take half my handle here. And I'm going to make sure it's open and my pump fluid. So basically I'm bleeding the air out of the system here. That's pumping fluid all the way through with the valve still open. And so you're purging all the air out and kind of pulling the fluid out of the reservoir and passing it through the system without pressurizing the ram. Now before we pressurize the ram, let's check this fluid one more time. See how much more fluid it took? Again, we'll make a mess. That's where the smaller bottles do come in handy. And you can wipe it down right now if you want to, but you're probably going to have to do it again and again. So again, open it up. And now close it. And now we're sending fluid through the ram now. Open it and now we want to check it again. A little air bleed there. Still got fluid. Good. Now we're going to do something else. So, and we're going to bring it to the top and continue to pump. And that will bleed air as well. And this is a two stage pump where it goes up quick if there's no pressure on it. And once it, re re once it realizes there's pressure on it, kind of slows the mechanism down so kind of a two-stage pump if you will and then again we'll open it and make sure you've got some resistance like you're pumping fluid which it does and now we'll check it one more time
Yeah, I've got fluid right at the top there. Really don't need any more. I can put a touch more. Really doesn't need it. Yep. Clean up our mess. And we are good to go. Hey, here's a little bonus tip for you. When I'm done cleaning a jack or, you know, fixing a jack, I'm gonna degrease it really good. Wipe it all down so we've got no, uh, no residual oil or anything like that. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take me a nice fresh piece of cardboard, slide it underneath and let it sit overnight. And then when we come back the next day, we can see, do we have any leaks? And are we leaking when it's non-pressurized? So we keep the handle open, everything's just resting. And once you pick it up, you should be able to tell where it's leaking from rather than just being a big blob of oil with it not moving at all. You kind of see primarily where your drip is. Is it leaking out of the front of the ram, the back of the ram? Is it leaking back here in the valve system? What have you. So just a nice tip for you to be able to tell if you did everything right.